Don't you say it. That thumbnail is not clickbait. I did pay 200 hours for this Mac Mini. And no, it's not broken. Let me explain. So many people have older machines, the thought of upgrading to something new can be very daunting. In a previous video, my 2018 MacBook Pro was a perfect example of an older machine that is more than capable to do most common tasks. I actually still use it for some very light editing and it does what I need. I got so many questions in my previous videos from people stating, I have an older machine and I'm thinking about upgrading. What M2 Mac Mini spec should I buy? That's the wrong question you should ask. You should be asking yourself, do I even need to upgrade? Then it got me thinking, are there older Apple machines that have higher specs that could easily handle most daily tasks? To help you answer that question, I spent $200 on this 2014 Mac Mini to see what it can do. Now, I know buying on eBay can be a little bit scary sometimes, but the folks that I bought this from are named Omaha Blue, and they were super helpful. The first one that came out was just an i5, sent it back, and they sent out the i7. In fact, they sent the i7 out before the i5 even got back. So thank you guys very much. I'll leave their link down below. It's packed with a 3.0 gigahertz Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of SSD. Right off the bat, an M2 Mac Mini would be $800 with 16 gigs of RAM. Yes, I totally understand that we're comparing apples to oranges here. The tech is newer, but the processor with 16 gigs of RAM on this old machine is pretty darn good. Now, the one downside with this particular model is the RAM is not upgradable. Thank you, Apple. You can't deny the fact that the Apple silicone chip has certainly made all Macs incredibly powerful machines for bigger tasks like editing videos, audio, and other processor intensive programs. But when it comes to everyday tasks, it does help in some areas, but for most things, it's overkill. The evidence of this is the cost of older Apple Mac Minis. I first looked at the M1 Mac Mini, and what I found were the base models starting at 450 to 500 hours for just eight gigs of RAM. I mean, they are a little less than new machines, but at this point, I'm not sure I would say to get this over a new M2 machine. You get a new machine with warranty and the option to get Apple Care if you want. You also might get a couple more years out of it than the M1. The same goes for the 2018 Mac Mini, which is not using Apple silicone. This model is still selling from 400 to $2,000. Now that's a big range. So why is it so large? Well, Apple put three different processors in these machines, the i3, i5, and i7. The other big thing with these machines was the ability to not only upgrade the storage, but you can also upgrade the RAM all the way to 64 gigs. So these machines are still more than capable, but you will pay more for it. If you're looking for a more powerful machine, but can't afford the top level M2, this might be an option. Are any of you using older Mac minis right now? Go ahead and leave a comment down below and let me know. Now I am using a 34 inch LG ultra wide monitor with this system. I wanted to try that ultra wide aspect for more room instead of getting two monitors. And don't worry, I didn't buy a $500 monitor for a $200 system. I am gonna be using it for something else down the road. I am happy with the performance and don't have any issues using the HDMI port to hook it up. Now this machine does have two Thunderbolt 2 display ports, but newer machines don't usually have that as part of their ports these days. Might have to try to see if I can track down a Thunderbolt 2 to HDMI adapter to see if I can get the image any better on this machine. Now I'm sure some of you are way smarter than me and you're watching this thinking either he has no clue that'll never work or yeah, that's easy. Just get this, this, and this. Could you please help me by leaving a comment down below? I would appreciate it. Okay, so the real info. I've been using this machine for a few days for all of my research, scripts, watching videos, and checking emails. I was pleasantly surprised how well this machine has been performing. I haven't had any major issues that stop me from doing any of my work. It does take apps a couple more bounces to open up, but that's to be expected, but they aren't drastically slower when I compare it to my Mac Studio. Yeah, that's a bit of overkill, but this Mac Studio better handle the daily tasks with no issues 
and faster. But when people tell me they wanna buy a new M2 for basic stuff with minimal strenuous processing, an order machine might actually be the option and you can save a ton of money. I even went so far as to put Photoshop on this machine and do all of my thumbnails just to give it a little bit of a push. For example, I downloaded some free text and the first time I went to select that text, the list kind of like stuttered for a second but since then, it's been fine. I have multiple layers open and going for this video's thumbnail, and it worked great. Now, this shouldn't be a problem, but there was no issues exporting, but I didn't stop there. I decided to push this machine even more. On Chrome, I have three long YouTube videos playing. I skipped ahead on one video, and it catches right up and starts playing. I have over 35 tabs open right now, and I'm using Photoshop, the machine specs are filling up as you can see here. Lots of Chrome usage. The temps are high, but they are within normal. The machine's fans are running, but listen to how quiet it is. It's cool to the touch. The back near the ports are a little warm. The fans have been louder doing other things. And if that's something that you're concerned about, this might not be the machine for you. I jumped on Amazon to look around and you can see it is working and it does have some frame loss. Now, let's say that you don't use Photoshop, nor do you have 35 plus tabs open. Now, the temperature is warm right now because I just closed all those windows and started shooting this again. Here I am opening up windows again and you can see that it's way smoother. Now, you might be watching one YouTube video and go back to shopping on Amazon or maybe you wanna check email. It all works and moves great. On a side note, I jumped on my Mac Studio, which I hadn't used today, and it's sitting temperatures 109 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know how much cooler the Mac Mini would run anyway, but that's just kind of how Apple does it. Going back to the initial reason of this video, which was, what do you really need in a machine so it works? It's just like buying a sports car, and you're not gonna race it. Then you don't really need a sports car. How about you wanna buy a trail-rated off-road Jeep but you don't go off-roading. You can still buy a Jeep, but you don't need the off-road version. If you're not gonna be doing 3D rendering or edit a ton of video, audio, or photos, you can get a machine that's more than capable that might not be an M2 or even an M1 Mac Mini. If I were to try a 2018 Mac Mini with the best processor, to save some money, I would upgrade the memory and storage myself. The first thing I would try to do is use it exactly how I use my machine today. But don't even get me started on the rabbit hole I went down for that topic. I'll save that for a video I'm currently working on. If you happen to be using a similar machine than the one I showed in this video, and you aren't seeing these results, you might have some other issues, perhaps with your internal drive being a little bit full, which can cause a slowdown. To help with that, go ahead and check out this video right here where I talk about some external drive solutions. If you enjoy this content and you wanna see more, Hit that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that notification bell so you won't miss my next video. See ya.